Hey guys, welcome back. It's Neon. We're going to talk about the comic book industry, the American, North American comic book industry versus the Japanese manga industry and sort of compare and contrast where the American comic book industry is compared to the Japanese manga industry and that uh, talk about how manga is making a huge comeback here in the U.S., but, but still the numbers are nowhere near what they are in Japan. Um, but, you know, could that change? Could that change? Because it seems like more and more American comic book readers are turning to manga. So we're going to talk about the comic book industry in general. Now, this is something we do talk about from time to time here on Clownfish TV, having worked in the comic book industry in the past. Um, we kind of keep a, an eye on, on what's going on and uh, sort of the, uh, I guess, the sad decline of the mainstream American comic book industry, or, or at least the, the direct market. Now, things aren't all doom and gloom, and I want to preface the video by saying that I had to do this in another video, too, because people are like, why are you so down on comics? It's like, no, we love comics. Absolutely love comics, which is why it's, it's heartbreaking to see the comic book industry in the state that it's in right now. And, uh, you know, watching all these shops close and watching the sales numbers uh, drop, you know, while comic book movies do really, really well. You know, it, it, it's just, it, it's very, it's a very interesting uh, uh, juxtaposition of, of uh, in pop culture where the comics that inspired the movies are not performing as well as the movies. The movies have absolutely eclipsed comics. I mean, pretty much everything has eclipsed comics, but there is still a future in, in comics, uh, for people. You know, we talk a lot about, uh, crowdfunding, about doing web comics, about, uh, you know, finding other ways to make and distribute comics. And we think there's actually a bright future there. We just don't know how long the mainstream comic book industry, as we know it, Marvel and DC in the direct market, how much longer that's realistically going to last, especially given that both of those companies have corporate parents who really, really need to search a couch cushions for money. Now they're shaking, shaking everybody down for money. They're cutting divisions. Of course, we're talking about Warner and Disney, uh, both of them gearing up to get into a bloody battle over the, uh, the future of the streaming services to go up against Netflix. And it's absolutely going to take a toll, I think, on the comic book industry. You know, one or both may flinch and decide that it's not worth producing new comic books anymore, which would leave the comic book industry to, you know, independent publishers, uh, manga publishers, uh, individuals who want to self-publish their own books. That's kind of where the future of the comic book industry may be. So we don't know. But before we get into the video, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. We just hit 50,000 subs, and thank you so much for that. Uh, we really enjoy talking to all of you and bringing you guys content with our opinions. So the comic book industry in July actually did pretty okay, I guess. But a lot of that comes down to some number ones and, uh, you know, some, some high dollar comics. So X-Men got relaunched. I haven't read this yet. I've heard, I've heard mixed things about it. A lot of people say it's pretty good. Jonathan Hickman's um, House of X and Powers of X. They're both doing pretty uh, pretty well, I guess, but they're expensive. They're very, very expensive books. Uh, $5.99, you know, that's pretty high for a for a floppy comic. Uh, we've got Amazing Spider-Man 25 at $7.99. Walking Dead finally wrapped up. You know, I, I think the show needs to end too, but I digress. But look at the top 10. So the dollar amounts, the comic book industry is doing well. I mean, look, the quantities are actually pretty decent here. House of X, number one, did 185,000. You know, Powers of X did 167,000. We go down the list. But by the time we hit number 10, we've already dropped down to 78,000. Now, what throw, threw me, actually, was uh, Vampirella. We talked about Vampirella, where Dynamite said they had 130,000. I think it was 130,000 copies ordered of Vampirella. And it's only showing... 76,000 on the chart. So it didn't make the top 10 this month, which I'm really surprised about. So I'm not sure where those other units were being sold. I have no idea. Um, but you know, you look at this and how, how is the comic book industry making up uh, revenue, lost revenue? They're hemorrhaging readers. 
So they're just charging more. They're charging more. I mean, a lot of these event titles are, you know, $8 books, $6 books. I mean, the whole top 10, $4.99, $5.99, $7.99, other than Walking Dead, which is, you know, the last issue as I understand it, you know, coming in at a normal $4, which I think is still way too high for a monthly comic book. So people are trying to figure out, you know, what to do to save comics. And basically kids aren't reading comics like they used to. Uh, I know our kids actually read comics, but they don't read superhero comics. I mean, they grew up in a household where mom and dad were working on comic books and we have a pretty extensive graphic novel library. And what our kids read is, you know, it's not X-Men, it's not Superman, no, not Spider-Man. They read manga, they read uh, Raina Telgemeier books, they read Doug Tenaple books, uh, but they don't read floppy comics. They have no interest. They've actually, our kids have never shown any interest in reading superhero comics, like none whatsoever, but they will read manga and other kinds of graphic novels. So I, I don't know what that says, Yo, know, I'm just saying that our kids grew up in a household where there was no shortage of comic books, uh, no shortage of talk about comic books. Uh, they grew up going to comic book conventions with us, and they really never showed much of an interest in superhero comics. So I don't know what that says. I really don't know what that says. Uh, but they've definitely had access to it. I mean, I understand people saying that you know kids don't read comics because they don't have access to to comics. Our kids have had plenty plenty of access to comics and they don't read the mainstream superhero stuff they read other they do read comics but they read other kinds of comics um so this led to an exchange on twitter i guess between uh, dc comics writer tim seeley and i think it was uh, jamal eigel about boys reading comics uh so this of course you know just like everything else on twitter became weirdly political and it talked about how we don't need to have boys reading more comics or boys making comics. But the thing is, is just across the board, I think I think comics needs uh, everybody. I think comic comics needs everybody who's interested in seeing the comic book industry succeed. And there are people, I'll admit, there are people who are working in comics right now that I don't think are really interested in the financial health of comics. Either they're uh, passing through on their way to Hollywood or they want to use the platform that comics provide since geek culture is is hot now uh, but they're not really interested in the comic book industry succeeding long term and that 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 has been i think damaging but i think the decline started years before that you know it just sort of added it, it sped up the inevitable um which is unfortunate but yeah i went to bounding in the comics and i saw this article and uh, they're talking about Tim Seeley. D uh, DC Comics writer Tim Seeley admitted one of the major problems in today's comic book industry. Seeley took to Twitter to write boys ages uh, 10 to 17 kind of do need help getting into mainstream comics. Uh, yeah, yeah, because they don't read them. We've essentially given up on them. This, uh, look, I'm going to say this is partially true because if you look at, and we'll talk about this, we'll talk about a lot of the graphic novels that are being published right now outside of the mainstream comics. And they do tend to target a more general audience or a more uh, niche audience. You know, they're comics for basically everybody but boys 10 to 17. Now, we talked before about um, Doug Tenaple and his 700 and whatever thousand dollar Earthworm Jim Indiegogo campaign. Uh, I will tell you, and this isn't just, you know, me blowing smoke or whatever, but really the only graphic novels my my son uh squid king really showed any interest in when he was 10 or 11 was actually doug to naple books he used to read uh cardboard he used to read ghostopolis um uh tommy source rex was another one he read i think he's actually got a hardcover of that and he actually read the heck out of those books uh he read them because they they actually appealed to his his sensibilities i guess whereas superhero comics don't um, in fact, Geeky calls superhero comics, uh, you know, she said that she joked with me the other day. She said that these are basically soap operas for men. And I'm like, yeah, I guess, I guess they kind of are, but they're sort of trying to get away for, from, you know, making comics strictly for a male audience, I think now, and trying to go more broad, which I don't know how that's working. I think, I think superhero comics, they sort of, you know, painted themselves into a corner with a, a mostly male demographic i mean let's be honest i mean i know a lot of women who, who read superhero comics too but for years 
they kind of courted that that male demographic and then all of a sudden they decided hey we're not we don't we don't really want guys reading these comics anymore so but then it's kind of like star wars right where you're kind of alienating the core audience and then you're not really cultivating a new audience effectively uh, to replace the old audience either. So, you know, it's it's a mess. There's a whole bunch of issues here, but we'll, we'll talk about some of these. Just, again, opinions, opinions. So Seely said, boys do need help getting into mainstream comics because they don't read them. We've essentially given up on them. I don't disagree with that. I really don't disagree with that. Uh, and that's not, you know, a backhand slap to, to anyone, uh, to, to women or LGBTQ people at all. It's just saying, you know, we don't make comics for boys 10 to 17 anymore. Uh, so Celie's tweet comes in response to one from fellow comic book artist Jamal Igel, who said boys don't need support getting into mainstream comics. And Jamal Igel goes on to list uh, several female creators in comics. Uh, boys don't need support getting into mainstream comics. Celie's diagnosis of the comic book industry is nothing new. We pointed out here numerous times that comic book sales are on the decline. Uh, they are. They are. And, and boys aren't reading them like they used to. Now we're going to talk about where the boys are going and girls and pretty much everybody and and i think it's i think it's manga i think it's indie titles uh that are sort of outside of the superhero market because i'm going to be honest uh again this is very much like star wars where most of the comic book buying mainstream comic book buying audience marvel dc tends to be tends to be dudes not again this isn't just a blanket statement there are people who are not dudes who buy mainstream comics but for the most part the superhero stuff tends to be uh mostly men buying it mostly older men buying it or at least you know over 25 uh over 30 because that was like the last generation that bought comic books with any regularity i think my generation was probably and we're in between gen x and millennial i think we were sort of the last generation that bought comics in the late 80s early 90s i actually think i think we should have we should have a name for those uh, uh comic book fans that came into comics in the late 80s and early 90s i think it should be like like generation image or something because we really bought comics heavily when comics really kind of went mainstream and the speculator market happened and then the crash happened that that was kind of when we came into to buying comics and that was sort of the end of i think that was like the last generation that really bought comics you know as a mainstream uh a mainstream form of entertainment i mean you could find the comics anywhere you could find them you know 7-elevens and walmarts i mean i bought spawn number one with a todd mcfarlane vhs tape at uh, walmart i think for like 10 bucks you know so it's I think we were sort of the last mainstream comic book reading generation. Then the crash happened and then comics never fully recovered from that. And it just continued to decline. And then we've seen a more rapid decline in recent years. Uh, you know, part of it, part of it, you know, has to do with the material being put out. But again, we've never, we've never replaced the old readers. You don't have kids going to the 7-Eleven buying comic books anymore. You know, you just don't. And that's male and female. You just don't. Uh, you don't. So they talk about, um, you know, why boys have abandoned comics. Common answers will be the rise in video games, offering a different, more interactive form of entertainment. I think that's true. But we had video games back in the 80s, 90s, too. You know, we had NES, we had Sega. But, you know, the games, there weren't as many. And they were a lot more expensive. And I don't think they were as immersive. So it wasn't like you could just buy a 99 cent mobile game and play the hell out of it forever. And I think, I think, you know, phones obviously had, had a lot to do with it because every kid now is rocking a phone. Why pick up a $4 comic book when you can download a free game, play it on your phone. You can surf the internet on your phone, watch YouTube videos. You've got, you know, like infinite, infinite information and entertainment at your fingertips. Why are you going to pay $4 for a comic book, for a paper comic book? You know, so that, that could be a big part of it. There have always been other forms of entertainment in the past, and comics were able to thrive. Uh, as Stan Lee points out in the video below, people will pick up and read a comic book if they're intrigued by the story. 
Others will point out that the high price point makes it difficult for kids to get into comics. Yeah, $3.99, that's too high, sorry. Uh, but in order to keep up with your favorite characters, you have to purchase at least two or three books, and that's not including almost quarterly crossovers from the big two. Um, that's true. When I was a kid, I bought pretty much all of the most popular Marvel titles. They were about a buck each. And, uh, you know, I probably spent 15 to 20 bucks a month on Marvel Comics, and I kept up with uh, all the Spider-Man books, all the X-Men books, uh, some of the Avengers books, some of the Punisher books, and, you know, it didn't break the bank. Now, just to keep up with the X-Men books or the Spider-Man books, you're looking at like $20, $30 a month. It's crazy. So... It's possible young boys no longer find pleasure in the current crop of comics being produced by Marvel and DC. I think that's probably it. I think that's really it. I think, you know, look, kids, and, and again, this goes outside of, you know, being a male, female thing. Just kids in general aren't interested in, in mainstream American comics like they used to be. Uh, you know, and, and the stories aren't there. And it's just, it's not appealing to kids. However... You know, it's not it's not really all doom and gloom. It's not doom and gloom because there are books out there appealing more to kids. I think people I think kids who are prone to reading comics are going to read comics. They're just going to read different kinds of comics, not necessarily the mainstream superhero stuff. So, what is popular now with kids today? I think and there seems to be a lot of evidence to support this that manga or manga style comics uh, are doing better that they're piquing kids' imaginations. Uh, in ways that mainstream comics have failed to do. Plus, it's a better value. I mean, you're talking 10 bucks for, you know, hundreds of pages, you know, 100 plus pages of, of comics. And uh, kids today are really into anime and manga. And that sort of bleeds over into, you know, video games and animation and all the other stuff that kids are into today. And there's a wide, wide, wide variety of stories in manga, uh, you know, compared to anime. And we're going to talk about the sales here. Um, so, you know, the mainstream media is actually jumping on this. They've been jumping on this for the last couple months, which kind of concerns me. I got to tell you, it kind of concerns me that there's been so much talk from mainstream media lately, including CNN, about manga and anime, because it tells me that Hollywood is hovering. Uh, Hollywood's hovering. And we, don't, we all know what happens when Hollywood gets involved in comics. It usually winds up uh, not being so good for comic book sales. Uh, but I digress. But I just want to look at the numbers here. Look at the numbers. You know, we looked at the numbers for for mainstream American comics, and th these are monthly books. These are monthly. Okay, so House of X. This is a slam dunk in today's current market. You know, one hundred eighty five thousand sales in a month, or at least units shipped. You go to Japan. Okay, Japan, which is a much smaller co country than America. Japan's weekly manga rankings. Now, this is for last year. I think I've got the last one that they did on, on my anime list was actually January, but I just want to show you the difference uh, in, in sales. So some of these titles, this week's sales, just in one week, 195,000 copies in a country many times smaller than the US. Okay, 181,000, and then they have a cumulative total. So you've got books that in a week, in a week are outselling what is being hailed as you know one of the biggest successes in in mainstream comics in the United States but th that's like a that's like an average week in Japan that's a week so cumulative you know you're talking some of these titles like Kingdom Volume 50 cumulative sales 600 and some thousand copies so that's probably over the course of like 2 or 3 weeks yeah, you see what I'm saying? Like, how sad does that actually make the American comic book market look? But then it's also, uh, you know, speaks to the fact that the culture is different. The comics are different. But so many more people read comics or manga in Japan than they do in the U.S. So, you know, at some point, at some point, American comics stopped being for everybody. They stopped being for mainstream audiences. They stopped being widely available and people stopped reading them. They dropped them. And I think it's just we're seeing the tail end of a decline that started years ago. And you can't say that it's, you know, cell phones and video games are taking away from, from comic book sales here in the U.S. when most video games originate in Japan. Like Japan's gaming culture shames America's gaming culture. You know, their otaku culture over there, I mean, they're, they're much more into their video games uh, and their cell phones in Japan than they are in the U.S., 
but yet they're managing to sell, you know, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of copies just of, of like one title in a week. So, you know, there's definitely, there's a disconnect with comics here in the U S with mainstream audiences. At some point, comics just stopped being mainstream entertainment and became more of a, a niche thing. And, you know, it's really sad. And I do think there's a lot more diversity in, in the kinds of titles, the kinds of stories available in Japan that they, you know, everybody from, from little kids to, to grandmas, you know, read, uh, manga, some kind of manga. Uh, I think I, I gave an anecdotal story before that, uh, you know, a relative of ours was married to an older Japanese lady and she read comics, you know, she was in her late sixties, I think. And she read comics, you know, uh, everybody, everybody's reading comics, manga over there and they're not over here. Um, you know, so there's definitely a disconnect and I'm not sure what that is. You know, they've got just as many movies, uh, probably more video, ga more video games, more entertainment choices over there than we have here. And yet they're, they're still buying in, in ridiculous numbers. Now it is starting to, it is starting to rebound here in the U S and I want to talk about now manga sales are starting to rebound here in the U S and you know, I'm going out to comics beat and we can kind of look at the cumulative, uh, unit sales, manga unit sales in the U S and you can see when manga kind of peaked and when it dropped off, this is sort of the Tokyo pop era. I would call it the Tokyo pop era of, uh, manga where the sales went up and up and up and up every year, uh, 2003, 2004, 2005. You can see, we kind of got up to, you know, 7 million units, uh, of manga here in the U S 500 and some titles. That's actually pretty sad. You look at compared to Japan where just a couple of titles would give you that number, but still, I mean, for, you know, for America, that's, that's pretty good. And we got to 61, uh, you know, million dollars a year in, uh, sales and manga. And then it dropped, it started dropping about 2008, 2009. This is sort of when Tokyo pop imploded and several, uh, you know, mainstream, uh, bookstores went out, you know, I think, uh, borders, I think was blamed for the manga crash. And you can see how it just dropped, it dropped to like half. And then it took years to crawl back up. So then we dropped, we went from 61,000 and a couple of years later down to 21,000, you know, and only, you know, less than 2 million units of manga. So manga was on like life support here in the U S and then now it's starting to creep back up 2014. Just look just like from 2015 to 2016, we went from 26 million to 35 million. And now we're at 35 million again. So 2018, there are fewer titles being published. Uh, but now we're getting back into two more units and I expect 2019 to be actually a very, very good year for manga sales. I really do. But, uh, yeah, in 2018, uh, 2.6 million units. Now, nothing compared to what it was during its heyday, but it's still much better. I mean, we're still talking dollar wise comparable to 2003. And I think we're on an upswing. I think we're going to see an upswing in manga sales here in the U S as kids and adults who are tired of it. <laughs> are abandoning the, the comic book industry, the mainstream comic book industry. So people are still reading comics. They're just reading different kinds of comics. I want to go out and show you the book scan numbers uh, for adult graphic novels that actually have manga sales in it. Now this is uh, for, let's see, July, 2019. This is coming from ICV2. And these numbers aren't impressive when you compare them to Japanese sales numbers. I mean, they're not impressive at all compared to the Japanese numbers, but still pretty good for the U S and we'll, we'll compare it to the direct market, especially, um, you can see that my hero academia here in the U S is, is definitely one of the top selling, uh, top selling manga. I mean, you know, just, you know, volume one, 7,000, 5,000. Now these are verified sales through book scan. So there are certain retailers that have book scan when they sell a copy, it, it goes, it's kind of like the Neil, I think it is Nielsen it is Nielsen. So that's how it works. It's like Nielsen's TV ratings for books. So these are verified sales. Now manga is still doing very, very well, but it's, it's interesting, you know, Viz is killing it. I mean, man, Viz is absolutely killing it. But the number one book was actually, uh, from first, second books. Um, but again, it's not superheroes. It's not superheroes. It looks sort of animated. It's not a superhero book, but it sold in its first week, 55,000 copies. Uh, George Takei did a book, 13,000 copies. 
So the Adventure Zone books are doing well. And then we get down into, uh, it's all manga. It's all manga. Uh, save for a Stranger Things book, which is a media tie-in. So you know, look at BookScan, the top selling adult, I guess you call adult or young adult graphic novels or manga. Now, this is nothing compared to what like, you know, uh, Dogman, you know, and these other like kids graphic novels are doing through Scholastic. But some of those, I'm kind of hesitant to even call them comics because they're more of a hybrid. But it's it's interesting to see that you're not seeing Marvel and DC on this. You're not seeing Marvel and DC. Now you go out to the direct market, you got the diamond, and it's it's completely you know Marvel, DC, IDW. Uh, here we have Adventure Zone here, and they only sold what 300 copies of it or 3,000 copies of it in the direct market. And you actually have to go all the way down to like 23 to 25 to get to get anything that's manga. So the manga is not really selling well in the direct market. You know, it's mostly Marvel and DC. So I think people have a very skewed, people who just buy their comics from comic book shops seem to have a very skewed version of, of what's actually popular. And it is it is definitely manga. So I think we're gonna see this on the upswing. Um, talking about the, the biggest franchises here in the US, it's a little bit different than Japan too. So My Hero Academia is kind of the undisputed king of manga here in the u.s king of anime a uh, tokyo ghoul battle angel picked up again because of the movie alita uh dragon ball is number five berserk one piece is number eight jojo's bizarre adventures nine and promised neverland uh is number 10 now i've from everything i've heard uh one piece is still the most popular manga in japan now correct me if i'm wrong uh one piece actually outsells my hero academia in Japan, I think Dragon Ball in Japan is actually bigger than My Hero Academia too. And again, I could be wrong on that. I'm trying to find um, some current data, but it does seem like it's ordered a little bit differently uh, there. Uh, the point of this being, the point of this being that you know, comic books uh, they may be on the decline. The American comic book market may be on the decline, but there is hope for comic book sales and other channels. I just think the direct market, Marvel and DC, had opportunities to course correct. They did not do that. And now, you know, they're paying for it. A lot of people are paying for it. Retailers are paying for it. Creators are paying for it. Uh, the comic buyers that are left are paying for it. So the future is going to be in manga. The future is going to be in uh, graphic novels that are, you know, exist outside of the superhero book genre. And it's going to be definitely in crowdfunding because one of these days, Marvel or DC are going to decide that it's not worth publishing new comic books anymore. And that's going to, the direct market's going to crash. It's going to crash. So it's going to be up to independent creators and small press operations to create uh, and cultivate audiences on their own. So if you want to make comic books, uh, I would tell you, you know, to, to start looking at doing your own thing. If publishers come to you, that's great. But I think you need to start looking at doing your own thing because I don't think things are going to stay the same for much longer. You know, the comic book industry is in rapid decline. I mean, rapid decline and the jobs are just not going to be there. They're not going to be there. So you're going to have to make your own job. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views and rants here on Clownfish TV. This has been Neon. We'll talk later. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.